Almost every GTA protagonist has expressed one of the seven deadly sins at one point in the GTA series, and in today's video we're going to be exploring every single one starting with lust. The sin of lust is defined by the intense desire for pleasure, and the first GTA protagonist that came to mind for this sin was Michael DeSanta from GTA 5. In the beginning of GTA 5, Michael DeSanta is shown to be a man stuck in the past, longing for his nostalgic days of robbing banks in the Midwest, which leads him to pursue many avenues of pleasure. Some of these avenues include the pursuit of a materialistic lifestyle, such as Michael's massive mansion in Rockford Hills, and some of those avenues include an innate sexual desire, as a couple months before the events of GTA 5, Michael cheated on his wife Amanda with a stripper, which is extremely ironic considering Michael actually met Amanda in a strip club, which already tells you about his lustful nature way before the events of GTA 5. The combination of Michael's infidelity and his verbally abusive behavior towards his wife is what led to a massive strain on their marriage, leading to Amanda committing the same lustful actions as she also begins having affairs with multiple men. Besides the sexual nature, you could also say that Michael has a lust for the criminal lifestyle, as it is one of the only things in life that gives him the intense pleasure he craves. Moving on to a fellow GTA 5 protagonist, we have a man who represents the sin of envy, and that's none other than Mr. Employee of the Month, Franklin Clinton. From very early on in the game, it seems that Franklin has never been really fond of the hood mentality that many of his peers seem to have. We can tell that Franklin is dissatisfied with his life and envious of a better lifestyle, such as the one that Michael DeSanta seems to lead. This leads Franklin to take on many criminal endeavors, all in the name of quote-unquote making some paper and not getting killed. Some of his friends, along with his aunt, even criticize him for switching up on them as soon as he starts making real money from heist and gets a mansion up in Vinewood Hills. On the GTA wiki, it even states that Franklin suffers from depression due to his lack of success and is clearly still heartbroken from his breakup with Tanisha and is probably envious of her new surgeon boyfriend. He shows some regret in his decision to become a criminal but feels he is too deep in to walk away. His lack of initiative hints at insecurity which further demonstrates a possible mood disorder. The switch scenes also imply that he's lonely as many of them show him roaming around the city alone and further in the story. He rarely leaves his house due to lack of friends and family who are actually on good terms with him. Franklin's situation improves at the end of the game however. If you choose to save Michael and Trevor at the end of the game, he finds a new support system with them, as dysfunctional yet great friends. But for all of Franklin's faults, at least he didn't end up like the next guy on this list. The sin of sloth is defined as an excessive laziness or the failure to act and utilize one's talents, which sounds a lot like a man named Johnny Klebitz. Johnny Klebitz was the protagonist of GTA 4's first expansion pack, The Lost and the Damned, and probably holds the award for biggest downfall in the GTA series. In The Lost and Damned, Johnny was a powerful and extremely capable member of the Lost MC gang, even serving as the leader of the gang while Billy Gray was in prison. Johnny was a headstrong and ruthless enforcer in the biker gang, ready to go above and beyond for his band of brothers and the people he cares about. But by 2013, during the events of GTA 5, Johnny was regressed to a depressing drug addict, all due to Ashley's influence. His meth addiction has made him physically and mentally weaker, he's lost most of the courage he's displayed in The Lost and Damned, and to top it off, he's easily intimidated and overpowered by Trevor Phillips. If the Johnny from The Lost and Damned had this interaction with Trevor, there probably would have been a very different outcome, but instead, Johnny is too demotivated and depressed to do anything about the fact that his girlfriend of like 5 years was cheating on him with Trevor. Johnny Klebitz went from one of the most dangerous protagonists in the series to a demotivated shell of his former self, and that's why Johnny Klebitz gets the sin of sloth. So next up we have the sin of pride, which is described to be an excessive love of one's own excellence. And no GTA protagonist fits this sin more than Huang Li from GTA Chinatown Wars. Throughout the game, Huang appears to be very cocky and quick-witted. He is portrayed to be much more intelligent than other characters in the game, who seem to be oblivious to Huang's constant mocking and sarcastic remarks. Huang does not value honor and tradition in the same vein as his uncle, claiming that this is 2009 and not 1403. Huang even acknowledges in the first cutscene that he is a quote-unquote pampered little snot. 
He seems to dislike most of the characters he gets missions from, but he does show the occasional respect to his uncle Wu Kenny. Even after Chan and Zhou are revealed to have not been traitors, Huang never shows any remorse for killing them. Now although Huang could come off as quite pompous and arrogant, at least he managed to keep his appearance intact, unlike the next protagonist who represents the sin of gluttony. The sin of gluttony is described to be the immoderate indulgence in the delights of food or drink. And a GTA protagonist that probably liked to indulge the most was Tony Cipriani. Tony Cipriani was the protagonist of GTA Liberty City Stories and a side character in GTA 3. Tony is one of the highest ranking members of the Leone crime family and an extremely dangerous enforcer, willing to do whatever it takes to protect Salvatore Leone and his mafia empire. And Tony proves this in Liberty City Stories by taking down several rival families of the Leones, including the Sindacos and the Ferrellis. But three years after the events of GTA Liberty City Stories, Tony has become quite a glutton and put on a considerable amount of weight, probably due to him indulging in his family-owned restaurant's food. Ironically, in Liberty City Stories, several characters like Salvatore, his mom, and Maria criticize him for being too skinny and advise him to eat more. Well, it seems like Tony clearly took their advice. Another concept similar to gluttony, but more in a materialistic sense, is the sin of greed. Greed, also known as avarice, is defined as an inordinate or insatiable longing for material gain. And if that doesn't sound like a perfect description for Tommy Vercetti, then I don't know what would. Tommy Vercetti from GTA Vice City is a criminal mastermind in constant pursuit of money, notoriety, and power. At the start of the story, Tommy is just an ex-convict who starts doing jobs for major criminals in Vice City's underworld. But throughout the story, he begins building his own criminal empire, eventually creating his own gang and becoming the undisputed king of Vice City. But a standout characteristic of Tommy's personality is his selfishness as he often puts his needs above everyone and only does jobs for people if they solely benefit him. An instance of such behavior is demonstrated in a cutscene while talking to Cortez. Despite Cortez having employed Tommy and paid him generously thus far and got him into contact with Ricardo Diaz, Vice City's most powerful drug dealer, Tommy was impatient and said that he had no time to run more errands. Showing a desire for power and greed, only when Cortez tells Vercetti that he has a chance to gain from the job does Tommy decide to do it. Additionally, another example is how Tommy initially treated Lance with distrust and shrugged off Lance's grievances above his brother's death and still insisted on learning more about Diaz's empire, rather than trying to sympathize with his friend and business partner. Another example of Tommy's selfishness is how he treated Ken Rosenberg. Tommy chose to abandon Rosenberg after having been disbarred from the law due to his cocaine addiction. Despite Ken having completed his rehab treatment, Tommy still chose to cut all ties rather than at least find the man who stood by him when his closest friends have betrayed him. Showing that when it comes down to it, there's very little Tommy Vercetti cares about more than money and power, which is why he represents the sin of greed. And last but not least, we have the final deadly sin, and probably the most destructive of them all, and that's wrath. Wrath is defined as an extreme feeling of anger or hatred. And there's by far no GTA protagonist more wrathful than Trevor Phillips. As a child, Trevor had a history of rage issues and violent impulses that ruined his attempts to fit into society. He claims that in a fit of rage, he sodomized his hockey coach with a hockey stick, and at some point he strangled a clarinet player with his own instrument. He also claims to have killed various animals and drifters, even during the early years of his life. Trevor had a pretty unhappy childhood. His father was physically abusive towards him while his mother was emotionally abusive. When he was a child, Trevor's father abandoned him in a shopping mall, which Trevor later burned down in retaliation. As an adult, Trevor has been described as a difficult person to deal with, often being described as extreme, impetuous, vengeful, psychopathic, unhinged, unpredictable, untamed, infamous, homicidal, and prone to violent outbursts and destructive rampages. He does everything in a sociopathic and relentless manner. Almost all of his in-game rampages are caused by Trevor flying into rage over being mocked over his Canadian accent. Trevor's mere presence always puts others on edge due to his extremely short temper and unpredictable impulsive behavior. Ron, who is one of Trevor's closest friends and an unlikely one at that, 
is constantly terrified of him and frequently tries to appease Trevor whenever he can, especially if he is close to getting angry. Wade, another friend of Trevor, is equally scared of him. Though Trevor torments and punches Wade often, this bullying extends to Wade's cousin Floyd as well. Even strangers who have seen very little of him can be put off by his presence, shown when he instantly put Fabian on edge despite not even knowing him in the opening cutscene of the mission Fame or Shame. In the Merryweather heist, he gets angry quickly when his score is compromised in the offshore ending. He gets so angry that he rams his face onto a wooden board and repeatedly smashes his face on it. Out of the three protagonists, Trevor can be said to be a true psychopath as he easily kills with no remorse. While it is never stated in-game, Trevor shows textbook signs of intermittent explosive disorder, a mental condition which includes episodes of impulsive behavior that could result in serious damage to anyone and anything around them. Although very rarely seen in-game, Trevor appears to be secretly ashamed and a bit scared of his own personality. If Trevor hangs out with Lamar enough times, he will admit to Lamar that sometimes he realizes how he's thinking of violence and brutalities and gets scared of himself. Trevor Phillips is by far the most dangerous GTA protagonist and someone whose anger and hatred may never be suppressed, which is why he represents the sin of wrath. If you agree with the picks in this video, feel free to let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.